So I'm going to write a sample example uh, for consuming the web service which is coming from my local web server. So the same will work in your computer and emulator as well if your Tomcat is running. Uh, the similar example already been written but if you want to follow you can follow otherwise you can try to attempt it your own. I'm just writing it so for a documentation so tomorrow if you need any reference it will be there but anyway I'm going to write a simple example where it is going to access the web service coming from a local host. It is very important your all project is going to access data from web service. None of a project I have given is a standalone. Almost all the projects are web service based. And that's a real condition when you work in real time project. Most of the project would be web service based. That's why I have uh, created most of the projects like that. So it is very essential to have your Tomcat running and your web application also running. Web application I have uh, everything abstracted put created as a var file so it can be deployed in any uh, java container servers such as tomcat glassfish jboss whatever server but in our case we are running in tomcat tomcat is more than enough for our testing purpose tomcat is still a capable browser so i can deploy any servlet or anything else what is servlet how things work it is uh, beyond to the scope of our training program so the uh, web part you may consider you need to only worry about what is the URL you need to access. In this case the URL is index.jsp. So the task is access the uh, URL and get the JSON response display in it, your app. That's what you are going to do. And of course one more thing also you can do uh, access this uh, URL uh, download the image. So you can display in your application. So anything you can do right now, I'm going to use the web service part. In fact, uh, my image app, which downloads an image, I remember. kind of a dependency it is expecting
let me recreate this app instead of waiting for this Okay, so in this uh, application uh, which downloaded an image from a given URL which you could not download in the last exercise because the external URL was not allowed. Now we have an internal uh, server which is running which also contains an image. So first we will run this code. The image is available as far as the local host if you have that deployed you can call test ws slash image slash obama dot jpeg so i kept an image for testing purpose With this url i am going to access here to download an image from a given url the only change what you need to do instead of local host point an ip address called 10.0.2.2 this refers the local or uh, host machine uh, where the emulator runs it means your computer <coughs> so it will try to download the image from the given url let me have this first part uh, it will still a uh, old one so i'm going to refresh i'm going to reinstall my application Now this particular image has got here. So the image is coming from my local host and it will work. Make sure this exercise works. If it works, we almost solved our web service or anything related to that, related to that uh, issues whatever we were facing. So our local host, I mean the host machine now will give you what kind of uh, whatever uh, web service or any kind of request response it can handle now we don't need to depend on external server to do that so this could be for our testing requirement so if you have already completed this exercise all you need to modify the url and test it if you get that image it's done the second exercise what i was trying to write was consume the same way instead of bitmap in this case the async task is downloading a bitmap and displays in an image view the second what i am going to do i am going to access the same but instead uh, this time it is not going to be an image it is going to be a json that json i will parse it and display the content the so json is right now first name last name age address phone number some sample responses come this this thing i want to display in my app so that how to do that I will write now but if you are we have already completed this exercise try to change the URL accordingly 
check whether you could download the particular image so that the yeah, image exercise you can safely complete remember this will only work with the emulator and your machine you should run in your computer if you deploy it in your phone naturally things will go out now of course that phone will access internet but uh, we have to do this because we have restrictions here okay so now i'll go back and modify this code there's a the previous exercise and this maybe i can rename it instead of just backed it up This thing is now going to contain a UI for load content instead of load test. This I'll remove. So my response right now gives me first name, last name age address phone number so what i can do i can put a scroll view it's a relative layout by the way so we have to be very careful This is a scroll view. Inside a scroll view, only one layout is allowed. So I'm going to keep a linear layout. I'll uh, first finish the strings file. So 
again display first name last name age address phone number Okay, I scroll view. Uh, I think scroll view is safer. Anyway, I, I did not call all the fields. Anyway, I have plenty of space. But scroll view will be helpful if your screen size going smaller. Maybe I can increase the button size to push the content down. try to tell the content is overflowing with the help of scroll view I can slightly scroll and see the other content that's the reason I made the button slightly bigger I'll clean up this code a bit
so the overflowing content I can use a scroll if it is overflowing for that purpose only I kept the scroll view it is safer to keep the scroll view have the content wrapped so if the phone screen becomes smaller the user can simply scroll and also helpful if a software keyboard hides the screen the user can scroll and view the content so that's the reason I kept it scroll view inside linear layout I kept all the edit text ok now I put the button size back So when I press load content, it should access the web service, get all these details from the web server, should display here. So that's going to be our requirement. Anyway, edit textures, I'm not going to modify anything. So if you are using software keyboard, things may not be looking good. So I'm setting to false. I think it's a deprecate right now. Instead, I can set enabled false so that the user cannot modify it. Okay, so I'll leave it. But uh, anyway, the software keyboard is not going to come for an emulator. Let it be like this. Now, time to write the async task part. all string is the URL going to be string the return type is also going to be string do in background for the understanding you can say it is URLs and pre-execute so that I can display the progress loader if required on post execute which will get me the response So, this particular content loader I gave a name, don't confuse with the anything existing class. This content loader is nothing but an async task. 
going to access the following URL and bring a JSON response. For our better modularity, I kept the server URL as a separate constant. So once we are done with our testing, uh, we can change it to a live URL if you are or any other uh, URL which I need to port it, which you can display as a demo. So it is better to keep the server URL as a separate constant. In one shot, I can modify if required rather than hard coding everywhere. The second part, the which the link where you are going to access, that is the dynamic one. So depending on the request response, the URL, the last entry may vary. So that only I have hard coded here. So right now it's going to be 10.0.2 only. Okay. Now time to write a HTTP client. I'll use HTTP POST because right now my application does not accept HTTP or it does not demand or force to make a HTTP POST call but HTTP POST uh, depending on its, uh, its uh, security I always recommend to access HTTP POST most of the URL we are going to uh, use here is going to accept HTTP POST so I'm going to use HTTP POST as a default one if at all uh, my design document talks about you can make a HTTP GET request then I will use it otherwise default I am going to consider the HTTP POST keeping URLs 0 because it is a variable argument more than one link possible but anyway I am sending only one link if any name value pairs if you have it but anyway I will write it I am not going to have anything but for your understanding or maybe for a revisit purpose if at all I need to send some arguments I can use the name value pair argument as an array list then I can tie up the key and value pairs say user name if at all you need to send so in this case I do not demand anything but sending won't make any error So you build your key value which you want to send to server and make it encoded as a form entity. Form in it becomes a form and those whatever bundles or name value attributes being sent there and error response will come once the HTTP client execute your HTTP POST request. Need a buffer reader. Okay. 
input stream reader that stream reader is nothing but the response get entity get content I've already explained them that's why I'm trying to run it faster the size the maximum size what I'm expecting is 2 MB for each stream maximum size of the stream so at this point the buffer reader will start loading your responses as a stream so a buffer reader I assume is a temporary file which is holding your incoming stream incoming stream means the data is being loaded it means this JSON, uh, the very first line and second line, third line or fourth line just started loading and that particular thing is being buffered here. So that buffer, I can use it to unwrap. It's a while statement. to hold in a temporary line every new line as it reads when builder is completed Now web result will get a JSON response at this point. I'll put a toast, let it be for testing purpose. Don't try to write the toast inside the do in background method because it is running in a different process, different thread. The toast itself runs on a different thread, so it may have a potential inter-process communication error. Make sure the program block comes out of do, do in background so that it comes to a foreground uh, process, then you can safely use the toast here. So never try to have a toast methods or any information in do in background you can have it either in pre-execute or post-execute not inside the do in background so my understanding that JSON should be received at this point so I haven't even call it inside the button immediately it loads ok it has come anyway it's better to call when the user press the button. So when I click 
compound content the particular json has landed from the url what you have just created it would be quite faster because it is accessing from your local host itself even though if i put a progress loader here progress So the progress dialog appeared for a few minutes, uh, so a few seconds. So it renders the <coughs> JSON. Now just we need to capture the result from the JSON and display in the specific edit text. That's what we need to do. If you could wait for a few minutes, I will complete it, then leave you guys for a break. Otherwise, do you want a break? Shall I complete? Just a few minutes. So all the edit text, make sure you initialize. So we need to start. Uh, it has to be a global because of the reason uh, the JSON comes in a different method it lands so we may need a global specifier for this objects because the JSON response comes in a different block the result make them as a global specifier within this class Okay, time to parse the JSON. The JSON parsing can happen when the particular JSON is fully loaded and received as a string. So in this place, your JSON would be ready and it is coming as a string type. So I'm going to remove the toast. Your JSON object, the from the string, you build a JSON object. Okay, so need a 
exception try catch block okay let us first closely look at the json so it is a the whole json comes and immediately when the json object is processed the very first object is of type string which is coming with a key called first name last name age so all the threes are the very beginning uh, the three objects are string type later one object called uh, address is contain another json object and phone number contains an array and inside each array has an object and two type of object type and number so you have to carefully analyze what is exactly coming here so returning first name last name going to be very easy here get string because immediately after uh, getting the object json object there is a very first object name called first name which is of type string These three are pretty simple. So let me test. So these three values have landed here John Smith and his age. I need to retrieve the address and the phone number. Maybe I have a couple of numbers, I thought only one number. But at that I will write after the break. But anyway, the minimal approach I have already completed. Now you can test this project live because you have a server running in your machine and that can access produce a web service response. That response can be consumed using a async task block, which is a threaded block, can access HTTP calls without affecting the foreground thread. So do in background that can process, it can also have a capability for example if you are using HTTP post I can use a form element data types attributes like a name and the value I can pass it and that I can get a response and through the buffered stream I can decode them as a string type and finally the JSON can be encoded sorry decoded using built in JSON uh, parsing capability of Java. So, this is a simple example. You can test that. You can write it now because this is very important area. Your most of the exercises are going to be depending on JSON responses. I'll post this particular link alone in the source. I mean, uh, in the developer site. Then after the break, we can start working on this. Yeah, I can go for a break now.